Eternally Yours, a program of inspiring music and an eternal message of hope. On today's program, Reverend Mabley's message is titled, God's Word in Revival. And our musical guest is Suzanne de Groot. Suzanne de Groot, beloved sister in Christ, for that anointed song. Now I hope your hearts are prepared because I have a wonderful message on God's Word in Revival. Do you know what the nation that we live in and wherever you're hearing this word, whatever nation or land you live in, what we all need is revival. <laughs> revival big time. <laughs> You know, when revival truly hits a nation, a city, a town, they empty the jails. And I heard that um, the policemen become parts of the church, become a, a form a choir, in, in, become part of a church because there's nothing hardly to do. They lay off wardens. Well, I suppose that's not the best thing if you're a warden, but 
I'm telling you, this is what we need, revival. Now, revival is not only people coming to Christ. That's a big part, hallelujah, that's always been on my heart for serving the Lord now almost 40 years. But I tell you that revival is a reviving of the people of God, that we get revived. We need to be revived. We need to be refreshed, the refreshing that comes from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. So I want to speak about God's Word and its part in revival. Heavenly Father draws the people, you and me, to Christ the Lord to realize what he did for us. For God so loved the world, you're part of it. <laughs> God so loved the world he gave, love gives. He gave Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, who died on the cross for our sins, walked a holy life, bore our sins, sicknesses, pains, griefs, and sorrows, and by his stripes we are healed. Every Christian loves Jesus, and Jesus Christ loves you. It's a love act that Jesus did. God has for us unconditional love. Scripture says, Ephesians 2, verse 4, Even while we were dead in our sins, Father God, quicken us together with Christ, raise us up together, made us sit together in Christ the Lord. What an awesome thing that he would take us wretched sinners who made mistakes ever since we were little, and wash us whiter than snow in the blood Jesus shed over 2,000 years ago on the cross and, and cause us to be his children and quicken us together with Christ. Hallelujah. God so loves you and he's done that wonderful thing. But you know, for you to believe that, what I just said, it took God's word. Yes, it took what Jesus did coming to earth and dying on the cross. It took the Father, thank you, Heavenly Father, drawing us to Christ helping us believe in Christ, quickening us together with Christ as we ask him to be our Lord and Savior. But God's word, God's word, do you realize that there's life in the word? Yes, there's life in this word. And this life in the word only manifests and comes alive and is real to Christians and those who will become Christians. The cults out there that use the word and twist the scriptures they don't know Jesus Christ. They don't have the Holy Spirit teaching them. But this word is alive for every one of you out there that chooses to believe in Jesus Christ. It's alive. It's alive. And this life you and I need in our life. You, we need the word. God's word is important in revival. You see, when you hear the words that are in this book, this book that God by the Holy Spirit inspired to disciples to write. When you hear the word, that's when the salvation, the gift of life eternal happens. I want to share the words that prove this point for us Christians and those of you out there who will become one. And perhaps it's really important any backsliders that you listen with your hearts and be stirred up by the word of God, because this word will work if you believe it. Right now, say with me, Heavenly Father, help me believe your word. Help me believe your word and receive your word. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Now, with the bit of faith that God has given you, believe what I'm saying, because it's true. This has happened to millions upon millions of people over the centuries, what I'm going to read to you about. And it says, first Jesus said, John 6, 63, his words out of my mouth, it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who gives life. The flesh, the physical body, profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are life-giving. So hear this word as well, 1 Peter 1, 23. Clearly tells us, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. You become a Christian through believing and receiving the word that is life and spirit, according to the words of Jesus. So you are born again by hearing the good news, the word of God. Isn't that so powerful in revival? Hear this with your heart. John 1, verse 1 and 12 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh. The Word of God that is God 
was clothed in human form, became flesh and dwelt among us, they beheld his glory. And as many as received him, speaking of Jesus, the living word, enveloped in human flesh, as many as received him, God gave you the gift, the power, the right to be a child of God. <laughs> All by the word of God. It's amazing, this power in the word, this power in the word to heal. Psalm 107, verse 20, one of my favorite healing scriptures, it says, God sent his word to heal us and deliver us from our destructions, even from them that would persecute us. <laughs> God's word has done all this for you and me. Receive it, believe it, beloved, it's true. John 3, 3 and 5, Jesus was speaking to a rabbi who came to him by night. He was an undercover Christian. And Jesus said, the words of Jesus, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And he also said, most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So unless you're born of God, you cannot see or enter the kingdom of God. Please, beloved ones, consider what I'm saying. Don't believe there are many ways to God. That makes it too simplified. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, the life. None get to Father but through me because no one else could, and no one else did die on the cross for your sins and mine. The wages of sin is death. God's word can't be changed. He loves us, yes, but he's still, he's God of his word. And he said, the wages of sin is death, so someone had to die. It's like we were in a jail, and a king came with a crown in a royal robe, and he unlocked the jail door. He came in and sat beside us, took off his crown and sat, said, I will go in your place. The wages of sin is death. Remember what I said? That's what Father said. That's eternal separation from God. That's more than the six feet under when you die. <laughs> and he took our place. Hallelujah. And as many as received him, you have that gift of life eternal. So how are you born again? Back to um, what it says in uh, John chapter 1, as many as received him were born of God, received the living word of God, Jesus. Romans 10, 9 and 15. It, this is important. A lot of people miss this. You see, as Satan saw Jesus died on the cross and he rose from the dead. Satan knows all that, but he's not going to heaven. Knowledge don't get you to heaven. You need to know Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. Yes, you need to believe he died for our sins and his blood washes us whiter than snow. Thank you, Master. But the scripture says, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you, if, if you confess Jesus Christ as Lord, believe in your heart God rose him from the dead, then you are saved. So the confession is important. So be sure, dear ones, you who believe on Jesus, make sure you have spoken out, even this very moment, say, Jesus Christ is my Lord. <laughs> that has to be spoken. That's what I see in the Word of God. You call in to the prayer person and you just tell them, Jesus Christ is my Lord, and we'll send you information, if you please, to help you grow. Amen. Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So again, I'm speaking on God's word in revival, reviving the saints and reviving to be able to see souls come to Christ. It says clearly, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you hear the word of God, faith level rises. I say in our services, in our humble little building in Burnaby, we have a bit of a church plant going on there. I say to them, over the next 20 minutes or so, your, your faith level will rise. Because the Bible says, Romans 10, 17, that I just read, faith comes by hearing the word. See the power of the word? It raises your faith level. <laughs> your faith level is rising through this telecast. Because I'm very diligent to be a woman of the word, speak the word of God. Because the word works, trusting that people are believing it. And praying even Father, hearing of faith is going forward on these broadcasts. Amen. Because scripture says in Galatians 3, by the hearing of faith, Father works miracles among you and moves by his Holy Spirit. 
<laughs> so the word mixed with faith, praise God. And faith comes from the word. So again, what is revival? It's God's people being revived. It's salvation, it's converts, it's changed lives. It is people coming back to Jesus. The backslidden trail, in my humble opinion, is like trying to go through life walking on broken glass. You get wounded and cut and terrible, terrible. God wants you and I to go through life in His strength by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> oh my goodness, I, don't, I can't imagine how difficult life would be without God. I don't even want to go there ever, ever, and I won't. <laughs> I'm the Lord's forever, and I hope you are too. Amen, amen. So revival is new beginnings, and God's word is active in that revival. Guilt is gone. I heard a little song the other day. I'm free from the guilt of the past. I'm free from fear of tomorrow. All because of the Lord Jesus in the word he's left us. The Lord Jesus in the word he's left us. Hallelujah. Isaiah, this is the word again. Isaiah 1 verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. 1 John 1 9. If you confess you have sinned, Father is just to forgive your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. You see, all these things are in the Word of God for you and me to know. So the Word of God is very important in revival, reviving us Christians, and causing people to come to Jesus. It's important to know the Word. Know the Scriptures. Talk to people. Tell them the main things when I talk to people to witness where I go in the drugstore and restaurants and here and there, shopping centers. I'm always sharing things like, God loves you. God loves you. And I have in my purse some personal tracks of how to say the prayer to receive Jesus. But just the other day I was sharing the love of Jesus to a lady at the drugstore at Champlain Mall by my home. And um, she said when the Lord took her grandma, who she said was just like you always talking about God, <laughs> when the Lord took her grandma home, she gave up on God. And then I started to talk to her and say, how old was your grandma? And she said about 84. I said, well, you know, her day was done. She went on for her reward. You think God won't take your grandma home just to keep you happy? She's up there celebrating with Jesus, waiting her for her beloved, uh, beloved granddaughter. And I said her name, which I don't think I should say on TV. But uh, then all of a sudden her face kind of lit up. And I said, you know, the only way you're going to join Grandma is to follow the Lord that she followed. And so I gave her that little prayer, and I'm sure she's prayed it. And that's what I mean about sharing the love of God and sharing what the Word says for revival to flow. And there's promises in the Word of God. Oh, Second Peter 1, 2 to 4. Here with your heart. This is such good news about God's Word and reviving us and reviving people to come to Christ. For 2 Peter 1, 2 to 4. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. How are you going to get to know him to experience the blessings the word says? Through the word of God through the Word of God. Be revived. Whenever I'm downcast, if I get in the Word, it lifts me up. There's power in the Word to lift you up, to encourage you. Praise God. There's a scripture. Jeremiah 15, 16 says, I found your Word. It was a joy and rejoicing of my heart. I've experienced that over and over and over. You can too. Get in the Word. It's amazing. God's Word will do. Then he says, verse 4, By which has given to us exceeding great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Now, the Word of God says, God's Word has given us, is, is promises. Now, 
If I promise you something, God help me fulfill that promise. But absolutely for sure, when God promises, he's not a man that could lie. When God promises something, it will come to pass. But remember, the scripture is to be taken in balance. And the scripture says, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, that the apostle said, I thank you, Father, I have received your word as it is in truth. The word of God, and it works effectually in I who believe it. You need to believe the promises, and through faith and patience, you inherit them in your life to your experience level. If you look in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, it says through faith and patience, they inherit the promises. So have patience with God. Usually when we come to him and we start praying the word into our lives, our lives are quite entangled in different areas, and we need to give God time to unsnarl the tangles and work out the promises. And because we're not experiencing them doesn't mean they won't be experienced. God's word is true. God's word is important in revival. It is very important. Hallelujah. And having said this word, I want you to know there is a revivalist series coming out. God moving through his handmaiden to stir people up, to know, just know, to experience level, acquaintance level, that Christians are sent ones and that you can be a revivalist. <laughs> you may not have the office gift evangelist as I do, but you can be a revivalist because every Christian is a sent one. Jesus said over and over, as the Father sent me, so I sent you. One place it's in, in John 17 prayer. And so you can be a revivalist. So if you have a stirring desire, I want to lead people to Christ. I want to be effective in winning souls. God's kingdom come and revival be an enhanced speedier. You just ask for that series. Be a revivalist, be a sent one. We'll be happy to get it out to you. Now back to this message about God's word in revival. You see, as I was sharing in 2 Peter 1, 2 to 4, God has given exceeding great, they're great and precious promises. They're promises from God. And you won't know what they are unless you're in the Bible. And they're for you and me. How I pray, and I, you can do as well, most assuredly, follow, come alongside. I say to God, I thank you, Father, every good promise in the Word of God, every testimony in the Word of God, that is my inheritance, is your daughter, manifesting, I pray, to my full experience level, mixed with a gift of faith, and my heart prepared as good on the soil. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Then I believe he's working it. Testimonies, promises, oh. They're awesome. I want to tell you the truth. The first time I read through the whole Bible, Genesis to Revelations, God knows. I, I read it through because I wanted to claim all the promises, which I did. Hallelujah. And they're awesome. And I still go over them over and over. I generally don't just claim one once and that's it. Hallelujah. So God has given us the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5. God has given us a ministry of reconciliation. Verse 20 says, We as ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So let's be about winning souls. Let's be understanding God's word in winning souls. Amen. You dear regular viewers uh, in television land, you know how much I believe in God's word and uh, how much I believe in praying God's word. So after 37 plus years of ministry, I've compiled scriptural prayers that are powerful because they're God's word. These prayers are saturated with God's word. For any a gift to the ministry, please try and send enough to cover postage. We'll be happy to send this little booklet of scriptural prayers that will bless your life. Amen. Having shared to you, dear ones, this message on uh, God's word in revival, I want you to know, ever since I got saved, decades ago now, it's always been revival, Lord, revival, revival, revival in my family, revival in the nation, revival through my life. And 
I've taken the nickname Mrs. Revival, thank you, Jesus. And um, I really encourage you, if you have a stirring in your heart to win souls, and most Christians do, that you would order the new series, Be a Sent One, Be a Revivalist. Because, you know, the sooner the work of the Lord on earth is done, the sooner we're going to see all the troubles end. <laughs> Hallelujah. So be of good courage. We're pilgrims on a journey. Our home is in heaven where our heart is. God loves you with an everlasting love. Nothing can ever change that. He's unchangeably loving you. <laughs> I want to pray for you, whatever your need is. God is greater. I want to pray that it would please God's heart, that you would uh, support the ministry in some measure, and that I may continue to have the honor and the joy of being Father's mouthpiece. And I just thank you for watching the telecast. So let me pray for you. Dearest Jesus, I thank you for your love for us. I thank you that you're the greater one in your children. I thank you, Father, that you're a God of love, unconditional love. Pour down a fresh awareness of your love upon us, Master. Just grant a deep, sweet awareness of your love and your presence. I'll pour your spirit upon us, Father, like you did at the day of Pentecost. Cause us to be freshly aware with the refreshing of the Holy Spirit and the anointing that lifts our cares and lifts our burdens and envelop us, God. You can do that. Oh, Father, help us to delight in you that you would give us the desires of our heart. Help us be in the word that we can say, I'm strong and the word of God dwells in us. And help us, Lord God, to remember we are your branch and you are our vine. We get life-giving strength from you. And Lord, I thank you. You said, if you abide in us and your word abide in us, we'll ask what we will and it shall be done unto us. So help us delight in you and you'll give us the desires of our heart. May they be in your will and pleasure. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Messiah, I pray these things, and I pray all God's children say, Amen <laughs> and Amen. At one a thousand flee to ten thousand. So with your Amen, Hallelujah, the victory is on its way. In Jesus' holy name, God loves you. Thank you for praying. Amen. If this telecast has ministered to you, would you please prayerfully consider becoming a financial partner that we may continue to reach out for God's glory. It would be wonderful to hear from you.